So over the last few updates, Adobe have been introducing more and more Lightroom presets built directly into the software. We have some really usable presets like cinematic, futuristic, vintage, and here's a new one called Video Creative. And hovering over the presets creates a quick preview with some really interesting results. But what many of you may not realize is that you can access all of your presets through Photoshop's Camera Raw feature. Now, why would you do this? Surely this is just another complicated step, wasting time sending the image from Lightroom to Photoshop, finding the Camera Raw filter, slapping on the preset, and sending it back to Lightroom. Well, you'd be missing out on so much more creative control. And here's why I don't use presets in Lightroom, only Camera Raw filter. Okay, first off, let me preface this by saying that Using presets can take the joy out of editing your images and be quite a lazy way to produce your final works of art. You know, you've spent so much time on location crafting that composition in camera, but then you get home and you slap on a preset in Lightroom, which at first glance looks okay, but then you realize the image has lost something. It's lost a valuable piece of information or a color that was crucial to that final edit or added grain to a already grainy image. And yes, you can go in and change the values of that preset, but there are a number of very good reasons why you'd want to edit your presets in Photoshop's Camera Raw as opposed to Lightroom. Let's take a look at this image. Some rollerbladers skating down the strand. It's fairly well exposed, but I think the whites could do with a boost to add some contrast. About plus 65 is good. Okay, now let's navigate to a preset that we might like. Let's try black one from the preset industry. Now, I love the general tone of this image, those punchy blacks with minimal colors and the road looks great desaturated. But the first thing we notice is that the preset has overridden the previous adjustments to the whites. We've gone from plus 65 to negative 100. Also, we're now missing some color from the top of the bus, which just looks weird. And the skin tones have become quite blotchy and overly pink. And in some cases, lost color altogether. You see on this guy's leg. Now, a new feature on the latest update of Lightroom is this very welcome amount slider for the presets, which lets you reduce the intensity or double the intensity of the preset because anything that is scalable will be adjusted automatically. The default for this preset on the highlight slider is plus 20 and the shadows is minus 10. Now watch what happens if we increase the amount slider to 200. The highlights have doubled to plus 40 and the shadows have reduced to negative 20. Now this new feature does give you some amount of control to the preset, but not nearly as much as using Camera Raw within Photoshop. So let's reset and turn up the whites again to the raw file. Now we can simply right click on the image and choose edit in Photoshop. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is make a copy of the base image because we're going to be using some of the original image further in the process. Next you want to convert this new layer into a smart object. Now why this is important is because smart objects allow you to go back in and make changes after the fact. Without the smart filter, any changes that you make in Camera Raw will be baked into the layer. So once we've got our smart object indicated by this little symbol, head up to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. Now, for those of you who don't know, Camera Raw is virtually identical to Lightroom, just with a slightly different user interface. Over here, we have our basic sliders, tone curve dropdown, and color mixer, just like in Lightroom. Now, the first advantage is that we can see that the white slider has defaulted back to its original position, but the image is how we left it, meaning that we can now push this slider further than what Lightroom was allowing us to. Essentially, plus 165. I mean, not that we need to on this image, but it might be useful for other images. Now up here on the top right, we have this icon which opens up all of your precious presets. Your user presets and all of the Lightroom presets. So if we navigate to the same black preset we were working on before, this has now created a Camera Raw Smart Filter, which has automatically applied a mask, which happens when you create a smart object. This is what we'll be working on. 
Choose the brush tool because we're going to be painting away the mask to reveal the original base image. Click the mask and now we can start painting back in the missing colours of the bus. Let's bring back the original skin tones, which looks so much more natural. And not forgetting the guy who had his leg all desaturated. And because the complementary colour to red is green, let's bring back this dude's t-shirt. And what about the Lloyds Bank sign? So let's disable the mask to see our changes. Now the beauty of smart filters is that you can go back into Camera Raw and make further changes. So let's add a gradient to the road here. Yeah, that looks nice. Or we can change any of the sliders. And perhaps the bus is a little too magenta. So this gives you an idea of the power of using Camera Raw presets over Lightrooms. And the advantages don't end there. So let's take a look at these two marathon runners which I took at the London Marathon a few years back. It's a pretty good exposure, maybe a bump on the whites. And let's ship it over to Photoshop. We'll follow the same steps as before. But this time let's go with the preset that really enhances the skin tones. This nude one works well. But now what we're going to do is duplicate the entire smart filter layer, which is going to allow us to play around with the blending option by using the drop down menu here. And let's try soft light. Now that really enhances the color of the preset. And of course, because it's a smart filter, it comes with the mask applied. And then we can bring back this lovely green, which complements the skin tones perfectly. If you've ever seen the TV show, The Morning Show on Apple TV, this is the colour grading that they like to use. Warm saturated skin tones with green accents. And I think the runner in the foreground is a little underexposed. So we can open up Camera Raw, pop a radial filter over his face, increase the whites, some exposure, and finally some clarity. So we went from the original Raw file to our chosen preset and the same preset duplicated with a soft light blending option applied. A really dramatic image that would not be easily achieved using a Lightroom preset. So let's delete these two layers and try something else. The same process as before, but let's go with a black and white preset. Futuristic three, and let's increase the clarity for some real punch. A touch more whites, and click OK. Now simply change the blending option of the preset layer to hard light. And maybe a reduction in opacity to soften the effect. Two very useful and different ways to add drama to a scene using presets within Camera Raw. And that's why I choose to apply presets using Photoshop and the Camera Raw filter instead of Lightroom. In fact, I usually perform just a couple of basic adjustments in Lightroom before sending over to Photoshop where I have all of this control. Working with layers and masks is easily the best way to improve your editing skills and being selective instead of using global adjustments will help to improve your results and understanding colour theory as well will help to aid this process. So that's your lot my friends, do me a solid and tinker with that little like button and hit this little red subscribe button down here for more photographic content. I'm off to the Highlands in Bonnie, Scotland for my annual dose of midgy bites and stag hunting. Not actual hunting, you understand. So uh, I'll see you at the top of Ben Nevis, we hope. <laughs>